Well, the secret sauce is that wasn't at Florida Risk. It was at my last agency, and we had in-house loss control that was on boots on the ground in North Carolina. So from a producer stand, so keep that in mind, but I'm going to, I'll bring it back around. Okay. So this is one of the number one things I'm going to be talking about for the foreseeable future, because especially in a hard market, premium is going to be bad. You're going to have to have other things you can do for people to clean the risk up and to drive value. So when I sold that deal, it was really easy because we had a guy that lived like 45 minutes away from the facility that was in-house for us. And he literally serviced our accounts all over the country from North Carolina. We just got lucky. Um, but he would go in and he had it. I think he did monthly visits, to be honest with you, to their different facilities. He would do a general loss control visit. Then sometimes there would be some focus training. We leaned on Liberty Mutual to do the fleet training for us. So they would come in and train all the truck drivers and do DOT compliance and all of that stuff, which is why it's important to include your carrier and whatever your plan is going to be moving forward, because you don't want to pay. You know, number one, you may not have that resource in house. Like I don't have that resource in house now. So if, and plus, even if I did Liberty Mutual has got a really, really good fleet safety training program. I'm not going to recreate the wheel. I'll use theirs for that. And then we'll use our resources to focus on some of the stuff for workers comp and claims and other things. But today, because I don't have that, what levels the playing field is Yellowbird. So if I need anything done, I can just have them do that same thing for me. So right now, for example, Kyle's got an account. It, this is the absolute shit show, to be honest with you. He has an account. He took it over on AOR. I told him to go ahead and take it over on AOR with Progressive like three months after it, two or three months after it renewed last year. And they have had 13 violations on their safer report Ouch. over the course of the last couple of years. And so now we took this over on AOR with progressive and they're not renewing it. So we, I told him, this is something where we need to get Yellowbird to go out, do a mock DOT audit. Number one, it's going to get the client's attention. Number two, we're going to get a report for that. And we're going to use that as part of our submission when we send this in, because we're going to have to show that they're aware of the issue, that they're doing something about it, and specifically what they're doing about it, and be able to hopefully get them reasonable pricing because, or even a, an offer, because right now nobody's even willing to write them. It's essentially you go on your computer or your phone to go Yellowbird, and I'm going to be, in full disclosure, I'm an investor in this company. I'm an investor- okay. I'm an investor because they blew me away when I used them the first time. And I'm like, dude, can I get, a, can I get on your cap table? This thing's going to go somewhere. And so it's essentially like Uber for loss control people. You go on, you create your job. So I go in, like I have another client that I used them for last week to do an OSHA audit. I had a, a client who had a whistleblower claim because they fired somebody. And then the guy came back and said they fired him because he brought up unsafe work conditions. Bullshit. You could eat off the floor in this place. It's the, it's the cleanest account that I have. So they're concerned that somebody from OSHA is going to show up. They want to make sure they're not going to get dinged for anything. So we set up a mock OSHA audit. It cost me $2,000, but it's like an eight hour audit. These people are going to turn over every single leaf inside the place, give us a full blown report. And that way, if OSHA comes in to check on them, they've already have they already know what to expect and will have corrected anything that they should correct before they get there. So I use them pretty regularly at this point. You know, you can you can pay for it out of the agency if the account yeah. represents enough revenue, or you can bill it back to your client. There are times like my buddy Josh Gurley did one with Yellowbird, where um, he he went out and had them do a mock DOT audit for his client. Yellowbird charged him 3,500. He charged the client 5,000 bucks because he wanted them to be serious about making the change. And they weren't going to be able to get insurance if they didn't have this done. So what he did is he charged them the five grand on the front to make sure they were serious. And then he contemplated on the back end through his fee agreement with them how much he was going to charge. And he basically rolled it into the fee agreement. So they didn't technically pay for that as a one-off once it was said and done, but it was on the, it was the onset of a relationship 
And I'm not going to spend 3,500 bucks on somebody hoping they decide to hire me after we do the heavy lifting. I'm going to charge them on the front end. If it was already in my book and it's given me like 15, 20,000 in revenue and I got to spend like a thousand or two, I'm going to do that in year one because that's how I kind of look at it with my loss control budgets. I'm going to look at something and and give it a 20% budget in year one. If if you're spending 50,000 in revenue, giving me 50,000 in revenue, I'm willing to invest 10 in you because I want to make as much improvement in year number one as we can so that we give them the perception that we're delivering everything that we promised we would deliver. And then when they see the numbers, they see we actually executed on it. Plus, it'll clean it up and give them a better renewal going into the next year because we can include all of our activity in a submission and everybody wins in that process. That's exactly what all the big boys do. You know, Willis Marsh Aon, not Brown and Brown because they don't invest in any of their accounts. They just sell them an insur- sell them insurance and move on. But that one tool, along with a couple other things that I'm actually going to be talking about on today's call, is literally puts us on a level playing field with the national brokers who have in-house loss control and actually gives us a competitive advantage because the very best people – aren't going to go work for an agency. They're going to have their own consulting company and they're going to put their information on platforms like Yellowbird to get hired. These people don't work directly for Yellowbird. These are world-class consultants that just understand their value and they're not going to be beholden to an agency. Yellowbird's just a lead gen source for them.